They've taken his soul. To these gods you cannot pray. They can break you, but not your promise. Even death won't keep you apart. Through his darkness you will find him in your sword still beats a heart. You fought for love unspoilt by your darkness within. You fought for your dreams. Now there's no way to win. In the head of his corpse lies the seat of his soul. So you must carry his vessel to bring him back home. I've been playing video games for the majority of my life, and throughout a lot of it, the experiences have been the same. Sometimes, though, a title comes along that truly surprises you in its crafting and intention. Ninja Fury's Hellblade Sinuous Sacrifice is the latest title in their steps for independent, untampered by publisher games that may actually be one of the industry's best games, not just in terms of storytelling, but also actually having and accomplishing an outside goal. Hellblade presents a world based in the long, never truly acknowledged times of picked warriors and the trials and beliefs that built the foundations of their society. Senua's adventure begins as she returns to the land she once called home, after a self-given exile due to the heavily focused psychosis that she suffers from that also becomes the base focal point in her story. It's not too late to get into the boat and go back. No one will judge her. No one will ever know. Oh, she heard us. There's no going back. The game is a lonely, introverted yet solemn tale about a female warrior battling her inner demons for her lost lover among the remnants of a village ravaged by the invasion of Nordic hordes. Senua isn't following this path alone though as along the way she is accompanied by the past teachings of her mentor Druth, the head of Love Adillion, and the tormenting horrors that were given to her by a father shrouded in mystery. Each of these characters either present themselves as a lone voice, whisper, or a projected image like a flashback in her mind lit up on a wall. The main companion during the quest is actually Senua's subconscious that speaks to her either in support, fear, or negativity that is only amplified in effect thanks to the game's impressive support of 3D surround sound audio through cinema speakers or headphones. <laughs> succeeds on many fronts thanks to the game's design in helping us understand the possible visual and audio experiences that someone with severe psychosis might go through and makes you question her confrontations and trials through it like she herself does in wonder of it being real or if she's simply wafting her sword to figments of her own imagination. The inspired Celtic environments and horrifying remains of a defeated culture help this throughout because it makes us realise that a lot of these horrors did exist, but through the journey are only amplified by the way her mind works. An interesting concept throughout, which was quite obvious as a tackling point, was how these people would actually handle someone with psychosis, the outcome being one of predictable witch hunting and cursed prophecies, but makes us realise how quick and easy it is that humans are able to turn on each other. On the flip side though, the incredibly inspiring pilgrimage these people went through to prove themselves and overcome discrimination through physical trials and ultimately the warrior's way. This shows that while women were seen lesser, they could still prove themselves equally like men that took such higher societal positions. This paves constant layers on Senua's path for assumed retribution and revenge due to the 8-10 to hour title bringing in so much groundwork and narrative content about a girl fighting to save the soul of her love from the goddess of death, Hela. It will take you to many lands, experience many things and enlighten you in its intelligent success to make a story about a unique type of person and the challenges they face in accepting themselves and the fact that destiny is never truly set in stone. I can smell your No! You betrayed your God. I am leaving with him! You turned your back on me. <laughs> The gameplay 
goes along a mix of cultural sightseeing, along with third-person partially over-the-shoulder combat that feels simple yet leaves enough utilities for combat to feel fluid, tense, and heart-pounding. Each encounter brings a mix of towering sword, shield, and club and axe-wielding enemies that gradually increase in variety as the story progresses. Appreciatively, the fights never turn repetitive or obstructing from the story, and all feel like they serve as a purposeful break from the intake of the narrative and world building. The difficulty itself, if left on default setting, also tunes itself to your skill in making it harder or easier, and this makes combat feel natural, and you and Senua are also learning the fight system in making her a capable, self-taught fighter. Enemies take turns in attacking the protagonist to either lunge in a swift dodge or parable attack, unless a second tier enemy that uses more unblockable tool sets. This means combat becomes more of a dance as you switch between enemies with the right stick and use block breakers, sprint lunging stabs, and dodge slashes to take on harder foes. Latia Senua also gains the ability to slow down time via a mirror trinket that also takes the role of her healing system. Performing successful dodges, parries, and hits build up the meter on her side to allow her to unleash a light show string of fast firing combos or sword wailing blows that not only heal her from the 3 to 4 hits before death, but also breaks all enemies' defences down, which feels like a Final Fantasy limit break. It is a really fun and riveting set of gameplay mechanics that not only feels rewarding through every fight, but also frustrating and giving a sense of determination through every defeat. It makes you want to do better and fight for Senua not just to help her as her controlling companion and observer, but also due to the spoilerific roguelike consequence for every game over in which a black taint slowly grows up her arm with every defeat. The question is, can you help her get to the end before this black infection reaches her head, or understand the message and tension Ninja Fury placed by threatening to wipe your entire progress if she does actually kill her. Puzzles are placed in between fights and the journey where Senua can use her focus to find shapes built into the environment that resemble ruins on doors like keys. Like the fights, these thankfully don't feel complicated or cumbersome, and while the interface presentation is a little weird and placeholdery, it is an interesting way of getting you to pay attention to the details of the world around her. If anything, when you don't figure one out, it isn't the game that you get angry at, but yourself for not realising what you had to do. The game doesn't try and trick you in solving these, but wants you to actually use your head, even if it means backtracking for a moment, instead of always thinking you must move forward. takes her travels through the entirety of her settlement from a forest shrine, burning village, fossilized shipyard, and even more, the locales mix up in a way that feel grounded but extraordinary due to the way the Celtics created their culture and architecture but then having is tainted by the horrific twistings of the invading Nords. Bodies piled, strung up, disemboweled or burned shows a society initially governed by natural beauty but then destroyed out of conquest and perversion. It is really cool to see each progressive level bring new tasks and ways to win or lose in that sinuous psychosis or possibly the supernatural workings at hand throughout her quest make it so. One has her journeying through a dark maze by lantern light, which slowly dims until you find lightable torches as an invisible hellhound stalks her in the shadows, or even an emotionally charged section where the voice of her boyfriend guides her through immense darkness, while blurry dolls made of bubbling collections of body parts patrol in the way of her path.
further is the boss fights that feel like an epic reward instead of a challenge after each environmental trial, and task you with using all of Senua's abilities from powering ranged attacks to dodging and using her focus slow motion at the right time. There are no unlockables or progressive rewards in a sense, apart from the tale that unfolds before you, with the lore stones also scattered throughout the levels that delve into the mythology and belief structure of the Northman world that provides stories of aspiring warrior pride, dread and poignant lessons in making an individual a better warrior. Sigurd's new find par lets him hear the birds speak, and they say Sigurd should eat the heart himself. Throughout this, you'll be sat back in awe at the tech used via the Unreal Engine 4 that makes Senua and her world a beautiful and mesmerizing tapestry of detail and handcrafted love. The lighting especially sells the experience in more darker areas, or simply seeing the sunlight bounce off the sands of a beach or glistening through trees, Senua herself looks incredible, beautiful in a natural way, and helps us stand out as a top tier protagonist in this generation of games. It would be a lie if I said that Hellblade had its faults, but Senua's sacrifice shows us what the current game industry is able to provide in visual perfection, and only gets held back with slight blurry textures on less important environmental objects, but this is due to the hardware trying to handle this quality at the moment. Hellblade is a title that sports itself as 50% visual draw dropper and 50% audio spectacle. As the game advises from the start, this is best experience with headphones not only to hear the haunting voices that accompany Senua throughout and show her subconscious reactions to the world in multiple forms, but is also due to the heart-melting soundtrack like VNV Nation's Illusion as its ending track, or Passarella Death Squad's Just Like Sleep that rises up during more emotionally fueled scenes leading to its combat sections. Everything in Hellblade is fine-tuned and handled with such love that you can see this as Ninja Fury's new baby in presentation and gameplay since Heavenly Sword. It would be an insult not to mention Melina Jurgens who portrayed Senua not just without any acting experience, but also as Ninja Fury's video producer in giving what many will see as an Oscar-winning performance due to the believability and emotion she whispers, cries and screams and holds true to as the aspiring picked warrior. Hellblade is ultimately a true gaming experience experience for a more grown-up audience that wants to delve into a world covered into the mists, not so black and white but somewhere in between, and helps us understand psychosis in a form of visual depiction that sure won't be an actual representation of how people experience it, but helps us learn of the darkness that many go through, and how voices in and outside of our heads can deter from the person we deserve to be. I am giving Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice a truly deserved Mega Muffin for its push to elevate gaming boundaries in storytelling, the understanding of health, but also breaking a mold that stands out on a shelf among games that unlike it will be long forgotten. But then again, what do you think of Hellblade? Let us know in the comment section below or why not let us know in the poll up at the top right of the video? We would love to know, but until next time, ciao.